Hi guys, this is O Level Chemistry, paper 11, June 2018, question 11. Two characteristics of a gas G are given. G reduces copper to oxide to a pink brown solid. So if it is reducing copper to oxide, it makes it a reducing agent. That means it is a reactive gas. And 1.4 grams of G has a volume of 1.2 dm cube at room temperature and pressure. So one mole of any gas has a volume of 24 dm cube at RTP. So let's calculate the volume of each of the gases given to us. So for carbon monoxide, we would calculate 1.4 grams divided by the MR of CO. Carbon is 12, oxygen is 16, 12 plus 16 is 28. This gives us a value of 0 0.05 moles, which when multiplied by 24, gives us a value of 1.2 decimeter cube. Next, for hydrogen, we would calculate 1.4 divided by 2 as the MR of hydrogen. This will give us a value of 0 0.7 moles, which we would multiply by 24 dm cube, giving us a volume of 16.8 decimeter cube. Next, we would calculate the moles of nitrogen by dividing 1.4 by 28, since that is the MR of nitrogen gas, this gives us a value of 0 0.05 moles, which when multiplied by 24 dm cube, gives us a volume of 1.2 decimeter cube. And lastly, we would divide 1.4 by 14 plus 16 is 30, giving us a mole value of 0 0.047 moles, which when multiplied by 24 dm cube gives us a volume of 1.12 decimeter cube. So now we have got option A and D and C, both having 1.2 dm cube of the gas, but option C being nitrogen is unreactive. Whereas option A having carbon dioxide would give us the re reaction CuO plus CO giving us copper metal and carbon dioxide gas. So this makes option A the correct option for this question. Question 12. The relative formula masses of four compounds are given. A student has a one gram sample of each compound. Which sample contains the highest number of moles of oxygen atoms? So let us first calculate the moles of oxygen atoms. In A, we have got three moles of oxygen atoms present. In B, we have got only one mole of oxygen atom present. In C, we have got four moles of oxygen atoms present. And in D, we have got three moles of oxygen atoms present. Now, let's calculate. So we have one gram of the sample. So for A, it would be one upon one zero two giving us a value of 0 0.0098 moles, which when multiplied by 3 will give us 0 0.029 moles of oxygen atom. So for B, we have 1 over 80, giving us 0 0.0125 moles. And we multiply this value by 1, since only 1 mole of oxygen atoms are present. This gives us... 0 0.0125 as the moles of oxygen atoms in the given mass of the compound. Next, we have 1 gram. We divided by 98, giving us a mole value of 0 0.0102 moles, which we will multiply by 4, since 4 moles of oxygen atoms are present, giving us a mole value of 0 0.0408 moles of oxygen atoms. And lastly, we would divide 1 by 63, giving us a value of 0 0.0159 moles, which when multiplied by 3, will give us a value of 0 0.0476 moles of oxygen atoms. So now we need to find out which sample contains the highest number of moles. So the final moles calculated are 0 0.029, 0 0.0125, 0 0.0408, and 0 0.0476, making 
zero point zero four seven six, the highest value out of these four calculated values. Therefore, option D is the correct option for this question. Question thirteen. The diagram shows an electrolysis experiment using inert electrode. So in the beginning, we have two tubes filled with the electrolyte and after electrolysis, tube one and tube two has some gas present in it and the ratio of the volume of the gas is two is to one. Okay, what could liquid Y be? Aqueous copper to sulfate. Aqueous copper to sulfate when electrolyzed would give us copper metal and oxygen gas. So one of the tubes will not have any gas present in it. So this is incorrect. Concentrated aqueous sodium chloride would give us hydrogen and chlorine gas in the ratio 1 is to 1. So the ratio is incorrect here. With dilute sulfuric acid, we would obtain hydrogen and oxygen gases in the ratio 2 is to 1, which is the given ratio in the diagram after electrolysis has taken place. And in D, we have got ethanol. Ethanol is a covalent compound. It does not have any ions present, so it will not undergo electrolysis. So with this done, option C is the correct option for this question because option C has hydrogen and oxygen gases produced in the ratio 2 is to 1, which is represented by the gas collected in the two tubes after electrolysis has been completed. Question 14. Which statement about ionic compounds is correct? Ionic compounds conduct electricity when solid because they contain charged particles that can move. They do not conduct electricity when solid. They conduct electricity when molten or aqueous due to the presence of charged particles which can move. So this is incorrect. Ionic compound consists of a lattice of positive ions and negative ions. Yes, cations and anions. Next, most ionic compounds are solids at room temperature because of the strong attraction between electrons and positive ions. No, between negative ions and positive ions. When molten or in aqueous solution, ionic compounds conduct electricity because they contain electrons that can move. No, they contain ions that can move. So this makes option B the correct option for this question. Question 15. The diagram shows apparatus that can be used to extract aluminum from its ore. What are J, K and L? Okay, L is the liquid aluminum that is collected at the cathode. So if we start with L, options A and D contain aluminum, eliminating options B and C. Next, K is the electrolyte, which is bauxite. Bauxite is aluminum oxide dissolved in cryolite. And dissolved in cryolite makes it the electrolyte. So it should be aluminum oxide in cryolite, which is present in both options A and D. And finally, J. J is the anode. Anode is where oxygen gas is produced. And the anode is made up of carbon. So J is the anode. Anode is the positive terminal. A states J as the negative terminal, making it incorrect. D states J as the positive terminal, making it correct. Therefore, D is the correct option for this question. Question 16. The diagram shows the energy profile for a reaction. Okay. Reactants are above the products, making this an exothermic reaction. And we've got two routes leading to the products. Root 1 has a higher requirement of activation energy. Root 2 has a lower requirement of activation energy. This shows that root 2 is a catalyzed route and root 1 is the uncatalyzed route. Okay. Which statement about this reaction are correct? One, more energy is needed to break the bond than it is released when new bonds are formed. That would make this reaction endothermic. Less energy is needed to break the bond than is released when bonds are formed. Therefore, this reaction is exothermic. So statement one is incorrect. Statement two, root one and root two give the same overall equation for the reaction. Yes, because they start from the reactant and end at the product. The only difference is the difference in the requirement of activation energy. Root two involves the use of a catalyst. Yes, because root two has a lower requirement of activation energy. And the reaction is exothermic. Yes, 
because the energy of the product is lesser than the energy of the reactant showing during the reaction energy has been released this makes statements two three and four correct therefore option c is the correct option for this question question 17 the diagram shows the fractionation of petroleum crude oil fractions okay so which row shows the correct use of the fraction bitumen bitumen is used for making road surfaces not as a lubricant the use of a use as a lubricating is of lubricating oils so a is incorrect b diesel diesel is used as a fuel for heavy vehicles not for aircraft engines the fuel for aircraft engines would be kerosene so B is incorrect. C, naphtha. Naphtha is used as a chemical for other, uh, for making other chemicals, as a chemical feedstock, not for making road surfaces. So C is also incorrect. D, paraffin or kerosene is used as a fuel for heating and cooking and is also used for aircraft engines. So this is the only fraction with the correct use stated in the table. Making option D, the correct option for this question. Question 18. Which compound is a constituent of petroleum crude oil? So it is supposed to be an alkane or alkene. Okay. So C2H5OH is an alcohol. Alcohol is not a component of crude oil. B is a carboxylic acid, which is also not a component of crude oil. C is an alkane and is also called octane octane is the main component of petrol making it a component of crude oil d is c 6 h 12 6 which is glucose and in no way is glucose a component of crude oil so this makes option c the correct option for this question question 19 a student wrote two conclusions about calcium carbonate. Conclusion one, the reaction with dilute hydrochloric acid is faster with powdered calcium carbonate than with large pieces of calcium carbonate. Yes, there is greater surface area. Grinding large pieces of calcium carbonate to form powdered powder increases the surface area. Exactly. This is the reason for conclusion one. So which statement is correct? Both conclusions are correct, yes. And conclusion 2 explains conclusion 1, yes. Both conclusions are correct, yes. But conclusion 2 does not explain conclusion 1, no. Conclusion 1 is correct, yes. But conclusion 2 is not correct, no. Conclusion 2 is correct, yes. But conclusion 1 is not correct, no. So, option A is the correct option for this question. Question 20. A compound decolorizes acidified potassium manganate. That means the compound gets oxidized. So what could this compound be? Magnesium chloride. In magnesium chloride, magnesium has a charge of positive 2 and cannot be oxidized further. So this reaction will not occur. Iron 2 chloride. Iron 2 chloride has iron with an oxidation state of plus 2 which can oxidize to iron with an oxidation state of plus 3. Therefore, this reaction can occur. And in 3, we've got ethanol. Ethanol is an alcohol which can get oxidized to a carboxylic acid. And this would result in potassium manganate decolorizing or the color changing from purple to colorless. So this reaction will also happen. So compounds 2 and 3 are able to react with potassium manganate 7 and decolorize it making option C the correct option for this question.